Hey guys, I'm Chris, and today I'm going to break down some of the ideas behind the Pliny Tune Sunhead from the EP of the very same name, and offer you some insight in how you can approach and understand this tune better. Let's check it out. The most obvious aspect that we need to talk about in relation to Sunhead is the song's time signature. For the majority of the tune, we're playing in 29-16. Now don't let those numbers scare you. You can play just as comfortably in 29-16 as you can in 4-4. The only difference between the two is an astonishing 13 16th notes. Uh, but in all seriousness, for those of you who do have a heart attack when you hear numbers of that type, or maybe you're just not sure what's going on with time signatures in general, here's a quick breakdown. So our top number, in this case 29, is telling you how many beats there are per bar. And the bottom number, 16, is telling you what type of beats those are. So 16 equals 16th notes. So 29 16 simply means 29 16th notes per bar. Easy, right? So let's have a look at the main rhythm in Sunheb. In its simplest form, the bar of 29-16 can be broken up into two groups of 7-16, a group of 8-16, and a final group of 7-16. So 7 plus 7 plus 8 plus 7 equals 29, right? I find the concept of breaking down an idea or rhythm into its simplest, most basic element to be an extremely useful and instructive exercise. I know it certainly helped me when I was trying to write parts for this tune. So there are three different approaches you can take to get comfortable with this time signature. First being what we just discussed, four different groupings and breaking it down into seven, seven, eight, seven. The second would be to cut the bar in half as a bar of seven, eight and a bar of 15, 16. And finally, just hearing it as one big bar of 29, 16. Now that's the approach we take in the band. We all hear it in 29, 16. But if you use one of the other approaches to get comfortable with it, great. They're all valid, they're all right. As long as the end result is you're comfortable with hearing and playing the music, that's all that matters. Ideally, you don't want to be counting at all and just hearing the music. So if it's you hear it in shorter phrases or one big phrase, then that's perfect. The best aspect about the approaches we just discussed is that they can be applied to any tune at any time signature, whether it be in 4-4, 29-16, or even something as crazy as 65-64. And yes, there is a song in 65-64. It's by the guitarist Ron Jarzenbeck. And I put a, a link in the description below. When we get to the solo sections of the tune, a bar of 3116 is introduced every other bar, which gives us a rhythmic loop of 2916 and 3116 repeated. But what this does is actually offer up a lot of rhythmic possibilities uh, and phrasing possibilities within that second bar there. Lastly, I'd like to talk to you about my approach to the outro of the tune. In short, what I'm trying to do here is make the bar of 29-16 feel like it's in 4-4. The way I achieve that is by playing a crash cymbal on the first note of each grouping and play a snare drum on what would be 2 and 4. The fact that the third beat here, third beat here, uh, is a 16th note longer than the rest gives the groove a really unsettling feel, which I really, really dug. 
This is something I picked up from listening to Elliot Hoffman and Carbon, and something they use to great effect in many of their tunes. So I hope you found this video instructive and got something out of it. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. And until next time, take it easy.